Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 33. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode, we're going to start working on an inventory system so our player can pick up different items and change the item they're using. Okay, so let's uh, quickly look at where we got to last time. The big change we added in the last episode was adding a sword to our game. And in this episode, we're going to add the ability for our player to pick up the sword rather than just uh, being able to press a button and use it. So the first thing we'll do is add a class to manage our items, and we'll call that class Inventory, and we'll create it inside of Logic. So, source logic inventory.lua, and we'll set it, or we'll set this file up to work like a class, which means it needs an object or a table with a create method. Oops. And to start with, our inventory is going to be very simple. It's really just going to manage one property for us, and that property is going to be current item, which will be the item the player is holding. And we'll start that item off as nil. Oops, return inst. And we'll give our inventory two methods. One um, will be get item, and unsurprisingly, this will return the current item, and one will be set item. And unsurprisingly, this will set the current item. So we'll need an item to actually set it to, so we'll pass that there. And the other thing we're going to do in inventory, um, I'll just wire those two functions up get item equals get item and instance set item equals set item the other thing we're going to do in inventory is deal with the case where the player isn't holding any items at all and what we'll do is if the player isn't holding any items or they haven't picked any items up we'll make them punch instead so we'll grab our punch class and we will say return let's make a variable here called default item we'll set default item equal to punch and we will say return current item or default item and um, using or here is just a faster way of writing um, if current item equals nil then return default item else return current item because what the or expression will do or the or operator will do is it will try and evaluate current item. If current item is nil or false, it will try and evaluate default item instead, and it will return whichever one is successfully uh, evaluated. So if current item is nil, the or statement here will return default item. So this is just a faster way um, of doing the if then else if you just want to do a nil check. Great, so we should be able to use our inventory class straight away um, inside of our player. So we'll wire it up in our game state first. So our game state will now contain an inventory. And just to remember, our game state is the class which really holds holds all of the state, holds all of the memory or the things we need to remember in our game or in our game world. So it makes sense if the inventory lives here for now. And we'll also add a get inventory method. So uh, one of the things I want to do is move away from calling game dot something dot something everywhere and instead use methods to get hold of the properties. Or at least it's something I'm going to trial and we'll see if there's a big performance overhead. The reason I like doing things this way is if we ever change where the inventory um, property lives, we only ever have to change the get inventory method. We don't have to change all of the classes which grab the inventory out of our game state. Instance get inventory equals get inventory. And the other thing we'll need to do is actually require our inventory. Oops. Local 
inventory equals require source logic inventory okay so now inside of our player where we have actions 1 and 2 um, we should be able to update and let's just update action 1 to say local oops inventory inventory equals game get inventory and then local item to spawn equals inventory get item and then instead of punch down here we'll use item to spawn so this is uh, this sort of shows the benefits of the work we did last time to make these two methods simpler because it still reads quite nicely and is very clear what um, what we're actually doing inside of this method now we're getting the inventory out of the game state we're then getting the current item out of the inventory and we're asking the player to spawn that item in the game and then we're interrupting the movement of the player so hopefully everything should still work so we can still create our sword by hitting the X button but we're really just going to focus on the Z button for now um, and the player is still able to punch by hitting Z so the next change we'll make is we'll add an item to the game uh, that if the player picks it up, uh, they actually hold the sword instead of um, just punching. So we'll go down to pickups, and it's worth reminding ourselves how our magic potion works, because that's the only other pickup in our game of the moment. And these are just entities which disappear when the player collides with them. Uh, they're pretty simple, they have um, a sprite and a sound, and most of the magic happens in this collision function, which just says, if um, if the potion is colliding with the player then we're going to play the sound and we're going to get rid of the potion so we're going to make a similar item for giving us the sword except we're going to make the item so it can give us any item in our game rather than just the sword because we don't want to have to create a separate pickup for every single um, for every single item all will become clear when we start coding so let's just call it item. Uh, we'll make it inside of pickups rather than inside of items just to keep those two things separate. Return item, item.create equals function end. And like all of our other entities or all of the other classes we wrap around our entities the first argument is going to be a position but this is actually going to take a second argument which is the item we want the player to pick up and now we'll need our entity class which is in source logic entity and we'll just set the instance of our item class or of our item object to entity.create and when we create an entity we will need a sprite we'll need speed we'll need movement what else will we need I think it goes sprite speed movement let's just check in our potion class magic potion Create sprite, ah, sprite, position, speed, movement, collision. So sprite, position, speed, movement, and collision. So we'll just set the speed and movement to be zero and nil because uh, this item isn't going to move, but we do need to set them to something. Um, but we do need a collision class. So let's uh, go ahead and start. So a collision function, sorry, not a collision class. So let's go ahead and work on that now. And this will take self, the entity that we've collided with, and the game state. So really, just to start with, we can say if entity is equal to game, and again, let's use a get player function here, then 
So if the entity we've collided with is equal to the player, then let's just start off by calling self done. So this should let our player pick the item up, but it won't actually do anything yet. But this is enough to test that it works. So inside of game state, let's create, let's see, let's create our get player function. Local get player equals function self return self dot player. Okay, and finally we need a sprite for our item. So we're going to try and get the sprite out of the item which our item is holding, if that makes um, any sense. It'll make sense once we've written the code. So we actually need to make a change here. We're going to go into our sword class and we're going to say sword.sprite, yep, sprite equals sword sprite. And the reason this is in capitals is because this property is being set on the sword class rather than on the instance of the sword class. And I want to remind myself that because I don't want to, ideally I don't ever want to change these properties. I want to set them, but I, it's kind of okay to read them, but I don't really want to set them because they're used by every single instance of the sword in our game. Um, also I just want to remember when I'm accessing variables which are on the class rather than variables or properties which are on the instance. So this is kind of like static um, fields in Java if you've used those. Um, but that's a bit of an aside. The important thing is that it should work for now. We just don't want to overuse this idea of adding um, properties onto classes. Okay, so back inside of our item, we can now say the sprite is going to be equal to item dot sprite because the item is actually the class. In fact, let's say item class here just to remind ourselves that that's what we're doing. And let's just neaten this up. Okay, so now if we go to our map, we should be able to use our new item pickup. So item equals require source pickups item. And inside of create room, and this is where we create our rooms and all of the entities inside them, uh, we'll just add our item um, pickup to the room. And we'll do that by inserting it into the table of entities which we use to create our room class with. So inside of this entities table, we're going to add an item.create. And this item needs a position. So we can just say position.create and I happen to know that 140.080 will put it pretty much in the middle of our room. Um, and we also need the item which is going to be, or the item class, which is going to be sword. So let's pull in the sword as well. not item, source, items, sword. And let's just check that when we create our item, we actually thought so we need to return the instance. Okay, let's see if that works. There we go, we have a sword and aha, attempt to call method get player a nil value. So let's just check. So get player works there, but we haven't added it to our instance. Get player equals get player. Okay, so now when we walk into our sword, nothing happens, but at least we pick it up. Or we pick it up, but nothing else happens. So now let's um, let's do the rest of it. So what we want to happen when the player collides with this item is for the, we just want to grab the inventory and set the current item to the item that this pickup was holding for us. 
So we'll start out by getting the inventory. Game get inventory. Wait, inventory. Then inventory set item. And here we actually need to get hold of the item um, that this pickup is holding. And the way we're going to do it for now is just on the instance we're going to set a value um, called underscore underscore item. So we're actually setting this value on the entity that we've created. Um, and it's kind of it's not ideal to set properties outside of um, outside of their create methods because it just it makes it confusing as to where that property came from. But to remind myself that I should only ever be using this in one place, I'm going to uh, start it with two underscores. Um, and this maybe will also remind me to come back and find a nicer way of doing it later. But for now it should work. So we'll say instance item is equal to item class. And then when we actually collide with the, um, with the entity, which is, uh, or with our item entity, we can say inventory set item to self item. So we can just pull the item class back out again. So not ideal, but it does it does work. And as long as we only ever use this item property inside of this class, I don't think it's too evil. So let's uh, see if this works. So we start by punching, we pick up the sword, Aha, and we are still punching. So let's uh, work out why this is self item inst item is item class return inst get inventory inventory set item self dot item so let's check out our inventory class set item current item equals item return current item or default item. Inventory, so we get our inventory and uh, we know that's working because this isn't uh, blowing up when we try and set the item and this should be okay, but let's just check. It makes sense. Entity dot create item class dot sprite position speed movement collision and instance dot item equals item class. Return the instance. So this is the entity we're creating, and then let's just check. Yep, we do set that. And then we grab the item back out of self, which should point to our entity. Let's just check that we do have the collision there. Hmm. Um, check that we set current item correctly. We do. Current item equals item. Let's just rewrite this in long form. So we'll say if self dot current item is equal to nil, then return default item, else return current item. And aha, attempt to index local entity to spawn a nil value. Interesting. Because oh, this should be self dot current item. Aha! So that works. Okay, so it looks like um, or was not working, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but um, this works for now, which is great. I'll look into why um, why you can't use or like that in Lua in a later episode. I know I've used it that way in other languages, and it has worked. But we have a sword which we can pick up, and so now we just need to add the finishing touch, which 
is where are we inside of our item let's pull in um, a sound we'll call it pickup sound um, equals love dot audio dot new source and inside of our assets inside of sounds we now have assets sounds collect item dot wave and again this is going to be a static static sound and now when we pick up the item we want to say pick up sound play There we go, the most satisfying sound in video games. And finally, just so it doesn't break later, we need to remember to set the sprite on the punch class as well. Great, I'm going to wrap it up here for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, just a reminder that all of the code is in the description, or at least a link to all of the code is in the description if you'd like to take a look. And if you do have a couple of minutes, um, or a couple of seconds even, a like or subscribe does go a long way to show me that people are watching out there, and it lets me know what you're interested in. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.